Apple is under pressure today. It lost its top spot as the top global phone maker, smartphone maker, after demand in China slumped, making Samsung now the leader. Among competitors, Apple sales were the worst, declining where others saw massive gains. Our next guest is not optimistic for Apple's future. Tiago Kapulskis is global tech research analyst at Itao BBA, and he joins me now. Tiago, uh, you've been bearish on Apple recently, and, and that's been the right call in the stock. Um, in many ways, is this industry data confirming what you've been trying to warn investors about? So, hi, Amber. Uh, thank you very much for, for having me here first. I think in a way, yes, right? I mean, uh, we've been talking about um, uh, soft demand for a while. It's been actually more than a year that we've been uh, alerting investors uh, about these risks, uh, which are materializing uh, now. Uh, we also think that, uh, and we can definitely discuss this more in detail uh, if you think it's, uh, it's worth it, uh, we think the lack of uh, innovation, particularly in AI, um, is one of the reasons why uh, Apple is, is suffering, besides the whole China story. And uh, probably one of the reasons why actually Samsung uh, out, outperformed uh, in the numbers disclosed by IDC uh, last night. So on that AI piece, I mean, they could fix that this summer. And then, you know, if you got, because they have an event where they are expected to, or investors are hoping that they will unveil what they plan to do about AI. Yeah, I, I agree. So uh, I think last, last week, uh, Bloomberg News on a potential AI chip, right, the M4 for a Mac, uh, uh, propelled a, a spike, right, uh, in, in the stock. So that would be probably a, a, a strong evidence, the first sign um, of anything AI-related that could come to the iPhone being uh, uh, an important trigger for the stock actually to go up. However, I think the, the, the question I have and we receive from investors is actually when this is going to happen, right? So. I think, the, as, as you said, and I definitely agree that uh, many investors are hoping for this to happen um, uh, in the summer, in, either in June on uh, um, WWDC or later in September. Uh, but we don't know, right? Uh, it's really hard to think about timing. Um, uh, so if, if Apple eventually releases a phone uh, with a lot of features like a Siri AI or anything like that, uh, we would probably uh, become less bearish uh, with a faster replacement cycle to come. But again, we would rather wait uh, for this to be properly announced, uh, materialized, uh, rather than uh, have a positive opinion just on speculation or, or rumors, right? And you definitely have buys in the AI universe. You've got a buy on NVIDIA, uh, which is, you know, kind of clearing the path for everybody uh, at this point and has slipped recently. It's down about 9% from its peak. You've got a buy um, on Amazon as well as Microsoft. How, if you can, can you contrast, you know, what are the factors that these stocks have that you're willing to be constructive on that, that maybe Apple is lacking? Oh, absolutely. I, I think the, the the number one aspect is growth, right? So, uh, and bottom line growth, right? So when we see, for example, NVIDIA's uh, numbers, uh, EPS uh, actually went up four or five times actually uh, in the past uh, two years uh, and with a lot of innovation coming in, right? Uh, especially as GPU is becoming more and more the center of uh, accelerated computing and generative AI. The same with Microsoft, right? So Microsoft has been in stock for the past uh, more than 10 years, uh, delivering uh, growth, EPS growth in the teams, right? 15 to 20%. Uh, we think that this will continue. Uh, there's even a possibility that there will be acceleration in terms of EPS growth coming from revenues in Azure related to AI or even margin gains. Uh, from better efficiency in compute use. Uh, and for Amazon, it's a little bit uh, the same, right? So uh, the stock has been uh, doing very well uh, with OPEX improvements, which has been another different trigger actually for 
uh, for bottom line growth, right? So uh, all of this is actually what's lacking on, on Apple, which has been growth for many years. Would uh, you say uh, we're there. about... We're, would you say we're about to enter, enter an era of, of stock selection in tech being very important, that it's not a, a rising tide lifts all boats? We're kind of starting to see it, but with these rate anxieties, you certainly have a big case of the haves and the have-nots. Oh, absolutely. I, I Actually, I, I, I'm a true believer of stock picking. Otherwise, I wouldn't be <laughs> uh, doing this for 15 years, actually, and I love it. So uh, I, I, I definitely agree with that. I think that we saw NVIDIA last year uh, as a good example. Uh, this year, uh, the likes of TSMC uh, or even AMD for, for a little bit, uh, they did very well. Um, I personally have a perception that we're just in the beginning of this, um, I would say, uh, infrastructure uh, wave uh, with several stocks uh, like Broadcom or NVIDIA or TSMC uh, getting a lot of benefit uh, and they would be probably where uh, long-term investors should put their money. Uh, and for example, software uh, or IT services, there's a big question mark of what's going to happen to these industries, right? Uh, as long as um, more employees, more people with no technical background can actually um, create their uh, applications and uh, actually improve uh, anything uh, software related. So uh, more and more, I think uh, stock picking, particularly on this infrastructure side, mm. uh, would be uh, good areas actually to, to, uh, to look for ideas.